If you can prove there's no resurrection, you don't need to be a Christian anymore. He says, your faith is vain, your preaching is vain. And then Paul goes on to say later on, he says, and we are found as to be false witnesses because we're claiming that God raised Jesus from the dead, who he didn't raise from the dead. And then finally, one of the major benefits for us about Christ's resurrection, it makes way for what is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 26. It lets us know that the last enemy, God's last enemy, that will be destroyed, will be destroyed by Christ himself, it is death. And then I'll read these last verses. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15, and let's read 50 through 57 as we close. You know what I pray? I really pray this for all of us. First of all, Christians, I think it's a loving thing to let your friends know about our faith. But would it, however you let them know, let them know in a loving way. It's been well said. People, people don't care so much about what you know. They want to know how much you care. See, it's not about winning. We use that term in Christendom, winning people to Christ. No, 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 it's not winning people to Christ. It's loving people to Christ. Because when you get in the battle, it's not like, well, we're going to win you. No, we're going to love you. We're going to love you to come to Christ. Now, love doesn't always say nice things. Sometimes love, how many of you have ever had a parent? I'm thinking about my, 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 my dad. He used to tell me things that you shouldn't do this. And I would think, that would make no sense not to do that. How many of you, how many of you, even, even people who are younger than me, anybody ever have a parent tell you not to do something or to do something? You're over there laughing at your mom. <laughs> how many of you found out that your parents were right? Anybody right? Mom was right. Papa was right. And now she's snapping over there. How about I always like to see the crowd reaction? Remember what I told you? Okay. But it's, 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 when you tell someone about, look at me, when you tell someone about their impending eternity, you are doing them a favor. Especially if they don't know where they're going. Remember when we talk about getting on that plane, you have no idea where it is? That's how 90% of the people in the world live their lives. They're getting on a plane and they're hoping it gets to the destination that they want to go to. And then, well, how many of you, what would you think of a person that said, when you said, where are you going? Well, I'll find out when I get there. What would you think about that kind of person? You know what you said? You're an idiot. You'd probably say, you're an idiot. You'd say, you're a fool. Wouldn't you think that person would be foolish? Well, I, well I'll find out when I get there. You'll find out when you get there. All right, are you going to have 1 Corinthians 15? All right, let's look at the 50th verse. We'll see how all this relates to us. And this is why we make such a big deal out of the resurrection. This is why we say he's not just a man, but he is God. Because it takes a loving God to prepare and do an event, not for his benefit, but for your benefit and my benefit. You know, Jesus died on the cross was not beneficial for him. Not was his resurrected from the dead beneficial for him. He didn't do it for himself, he did it for you. And, he, and, 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 boy, you guys nailed it on that skit. Now, would it be exactly the way the skit went? Maybe not. But I tell you what, it won't end up right. Here's what he says. 50th verse, 1 Corinthians 15. He says, Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable, that's our bodies, the imperishable. Imperishable. Here's what he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. Meaning, we will not, it's a euphemism. We will not all be asleep. Some of us are going to get raptured. Some people don't believe in the rapture. That's okay. If you're a Christian, you just be walking down the street one day, they your shoes right without you. Hey, I wonder, well, what, is he in the rapture with our clothes on? Or, or, I almost kind of. Let's see, you hold on. I'm serious, honey. Do you ever think about it? Do the clothes get raptured? Me and my cufflinks, oh, you know. <laughs> oh, get down, Devin. I'm glad you made it today. She said, isn't that corruptible? Cufflinks, shirts, pants are corruptible. He says, verse 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You want to see what happens to the believer when he I just saw you blink, Asia. That's how quickly it goes. Just like that. I just saw you blink. Just like that. That's a, it's not going to be like some process where we're going to go from like, sort of like metamorphosis. 
It says in a second, he's going to change these bodies that decay and make them eternal. And for those who have already fallen asleep in Christ and passed and died in Christ, their bodies will be, it's not about to be like the movies where, you know, all the city, the flesh, it's going to be within a moment. And all I always ask, people always say, what about when people are cremated? You ever, you ever had that question? My sister was cremated. She'll be resurrected just like that. Why? Because God knows where all the ashes are. He knows where they are. He can put them all together. Just as quickly, just as quickly as you can believe. And if a person had raised himself from the dead, I guess they can find the part. What do you think? So he says, in a moment of the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, hallelujah, imperishable. Can you imagine having bodies that never have a stomach ache? Can you imagine having a body that never has any problems? There's no doctor's offices in heaven. They don't have any blood pressure medication or any insulin in heaven. They don't have any back pain medication in heaven. They don't have any growth grain in heaven. They don't have any all that stuff in heaven. <laughs> he says, he, and I love it. He says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then we will, then will come about the saying that is written: Death is swallowed up. In victory. Why are you a Christian? Because death has been swallowed up in victory. Yeah. What do you have to offer? To die is gain. That's what I have to offer. Death will be swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Listen, God, this is how we do it with people that we love. We tell them, look, I'm part of a faith that tells death, I'm not worried about you. And if you happen to take me, I will conquer you. Not I with my power, but my Savior has conquered you. I am the benefactor of that. Hallelujah. I mean, this body of mine, no matter how old I am, when I, when I, whenever I pass away, or if, I, if Jesus tarries and I pass away, I, whatever condition or not a condition or whatever you know, state I'm in, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to get up in power. And go, this same body, not a different one. Resurrection isn't like reincarnation that you get 16 different bodies. You get the same one. It is the Greek word anastasis. It means to stand again. Your body that is sown in dishonor, as the Bible says, it is raised in honor. And then finally he says this. He says the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through that man who could raise himself from the dead. From that man who could raise himself from the dead that while he was dead. And that man that raised himself from the dead while he's dead, guess what he's going to do with how he's going to be able to raise you from the dead while he's alive? And here's what I'll close with. For the Christian, be encouraged. I, I'm going to take two minutes. I know I'm a little old. How many of you, like me, your life has challenges? Let me see your hands high. Don't be ashamed to be a church. What the cat say? Mm. <laughs> life is filled with challenges. Yeah, we have some good times in life, don't you? Man, I, I mean, I'll tell you, I like to eat good. Y'all like to eat good? Hey guys, I'm still tasting that chicken. Thanks for that chicken. That chicken was so good. I can still taste it. I like to eat. I like good. I like good things. I like smiling. I don't like laughing. I like having fun. We're supposed to be going out somewhere today, huh? To get something to eat. We like having fun. That's all good. But life has challenges. And for people that will tell you being a Christian means life doesn't have any challenges, it's like, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Just go la 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 la. Not really listen to you. La 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 la. Here's what he says about the resurrection. I remember I stood in the class by the man who's the foremost authority on teaching on the resurrection. His name is Dr. Gary Habermas, and he said he couldn't just figure out how his loving wife in many, many years had a terminal disease and left him. But he said the resurrection answered that question. Because his wife is. I don't talk about believers as walls. I talk about them as is. Because Excuse my French, but they still is. They still these. They're with Christ in glory in heaven. We'll see them again. Yep. We'll be with them again. 
We'll never have to say goodbye. I love the line in the song. Every day the same I'm going to a city of the place called heaven where there's always hello and never goodbye. Can you, how is it, when I see you, when I see you and I pass you in heaven, we're not going to say bye. We're going to say, see you later. See you later. I'll see you on the next planet. I'll see you in the next millennium. Oh, you got this fantasy. You really believe that? That's the only reason why I'm a Christian. Because there's too much crap that you deal with in life as a Christian to be a Christian just for some Mickey Mouse benefits here on this earth. In fact, the crap outweighs the benefits on this earth. Oh, man. I can't wait. Well, I can wait. <laughs> you know, you heard of everybody wants to go to heaven. You ever heard of the joke that the guy, the priest, how many of you have to have the background? God goes to the priest, he says, he says, Bishop, I need to know something. I need to know if going to heaven. He said, come back next Friday, I'll tell you. So he goes back next Friday to the bishop and the priest. The priest says, I got good news and bad news. He said, the good news is you're going to heaven. The bad news is you're going tomorrow. But we just said heaven. <laughs> and it's really not bad news. Here's what it is, and here's how it sums up. He sums it up in this letter, 15th verse of, of, of 1 Corinthians 15, this is what will close. This will be the benediction. This is what you have as a believer. This is what you can lay hold to as a person who knows the man who can raise himself from the dead. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast. When you're going through the trials, the tribulations, the tests, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Knowing that your work in the Lord what kind of man that raised himself from the dead? The man, the God man who created all things. The God man who is in control of all things. And last, I'm going to leave you with this. The God man who loves you more than you do. Don't leave this life without experiencing that love. I'm going to ask you to just bow your head with me. Just for a second, I'm going to be closed with You know, Father, you know, you're, you are what you saw this day long before it happened. So. Father, you know who in this room knows you and who in this room doesn't. And I'm going to keep my eyes closed, too. I'm going to ask everybody to close their eyes. I want people to have some privacy with them and them, just for like 45 seconds. In fact, usually when you go to the church to give an invitation to have you come up forward and what have you, the pastor will look and see who your hand is. The only person who needs to see your hand right now is God. So nobody should be looking. You know, nobody should have their eyes open. I don't even have my eyes open to see if anybody has their eyes open. Thank you. We're so glad you came to be here. Thank you for the salvation and resurrection with you on your jobs, with you on your families. And just have a nice, happy resurrection day. And let's leave together by making that strong proclamation. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. I believe that you're my very best friend. And I believe that you have died for my sins. And I believe that you are coming again, Lord. In Jesus Christ, I do. What a true believer knows Do you believe that he died on the cross But in just three days my Jesus rose Do you believe he lives Do you believe he is Then shout out to the world In Jesus Christ I do believe